Hi friends! If you're new here, welcome! In this video, I'm going to be making some 1900s combinations. Um, I've been putting these off for a while. I did a separate uh, shimmies and drawers about a year ago, uh, which I wanted to do because I thought it would be a little bit more versatile and easier to use, and I could use the two pieces separately, but I think it's time to make some combinations. So I have this fabric, which is it's either a linen or a linen cotton blend, and it is probably the lightest weight linen that I have ever seen or felt. The plan is to sew them entirely by hand with probably a combination of linen and silk thread, maybe only linen thread. I'm not sure yet. By this time period, sewing machines were a thing, so that's not like necessarily for historical accuracy. It's just something I wanted to do on this project. Uh, it isn't going to be entirely natural fiber. There is the lace that I have. First of all, let me show you this lace. My camera's at a set focus, so I can't like bring it close to the camera, but do you see this gorgeousness? Uh, this is a vintage lace. I think the mesh is a synthetic. I think it's probably polyester, uh, but the, the, like, the lace part I think is cotton, so. I'm pretty happy with that. The color is like a natural color, which sort of matches this. Um, unlike this lace, which I think is a cotton poly blend for the, the lace parts and then the, the mesh is probably full polyester, uh, this clearly looks a lot more white and when you hold up the fabric and this together, uh, this lace looks a little bit more white but they kind of match. When you hold up this fabric and this lace together, the lace looks a little bit uh, more off-white, but they still kind of match. But if you put these three together, um, there's, a, there's a pretty clear difference at least between the two laces. So I think that'll be okay. Um, I'm not going to try to dye this lace. As far as the design, I have not yet finalized my design. Uh, I do love the classic Met Museum combinations that everyone looks at, which photo will be inserted here. Uh, but also there are so many other gorgeous, gorgeous combinations in museums and ones that I've seen that I think are are real uh, period combinations from places like Etsy. Uh, so I think, I think for the bottom I am doing something very simple, just a slightly circular drawer with a little bit of a gathering uh, at the waist and then a lace ruffle at the bottom and a piece of insertion lace down the side. For the top, I'm going to be doing a fabric uh, strap. So rather than doing a lace strap or a ribbon strap, I am gonna have fabric here and then have lace on either side of that fabric. I do want to design the top so that the, so that the straps can be worn off the shoulder uh, because I think that's how they would do it for an evening gown, for like an off the shoulder, off the shoulder evening gown. So I'm thinking that if I pattern it so that it can be, so that the straps can be here, and then just use that ribbon to gather it up and keep them on top of the shoulder, I think that'll be good. And I think that is period accurate, just based on the way that the combinations that are patterned like this look. Usually the ribbon is tied and it looks like the actual fabric is being gathered by the ribbon, which would lead me to believe that if the ribbon was looser, then the straps would be able to sit off the shoulder. So that's my theory. Yeah, I will design these on paper and pattern them and cut them out. Oh, I did want to say, as far as the pattern for the bottom sort of drawers part of the combinations, I'm going to go with a relatively circular pattern, but I'm going to narrow it quite a bit more than I did with my original drawers pattern, which I'll link that video up here. For that one, I started out with a super wide pattern and I ended up narrowing it quite a bit. But for this, I want to make the bottom of the drawers as narrow as possible uh, while still keeping that kind of flared shape just because I want to conserve this lace and I want this lace to be gathered into that bottom edge. So the less the less lace that I can use there, the better because I will. I would love to be able to use this lace for another project in the future. I started by draping the bodice on my dress form. My dress form is not exactly the same size as me, so I had to take that into account, but it's pretty close, so mostly I could just drape on my dress form. I draped the bodice pattern with the off-the-shoulder sleeve, and I added some ease into the waist and a tiny bit around the bust and in the front. 
You can see here I tried moving the strap from off the shoulder to on the shoulder uh, to see how the ease would lay and it seemed like it looked pretty good so I moved on to the back. I'm pretty sure after this I took my draped pieces and sort of tried to put them on. It's only half a garment so you can't really put it on but I just put it on my body to see how it would lay and decided to make a few little changes and then I transferred it to brown paper. For the drawers, I started with my old drawers pattern. I traced it out and then pretty much immediately forgot about it and drew a new drawers pattern on top of it. The new pattern is a little bit shorter with a narrower leg and a wider waist. Moving on to final fabric, I I say that, I didn't even really make a mock-up. Uh, but moving on to final fabric, I traced my pattern out in pencil because I wanted to have a fairly precise line of where my pattern was, even though I didn't necessarily know it would fit perfectly. Uh, which it didn't, but I digress. The pattern was traced out and then cut out of this gorgeous linen, probably linen cotton blend. I also tore a few strips, two wider strips for the waistband, the outer waistband, and the inner waistband, and then four facings, which were cut on the straight grain. They should be on the bias, and you'll see later that they don't quite lay flat when I put them onto the crotch curve, but I made them thin enough that it kind of works. Now to start sewing. I did two different methods of insertion lace in this project mostly because I was just experimenting and figuring out what worked, and I'll be talking about both of them. But before I actually start sewing, I have to wax my thread, because I like sewing with waxed thread. I know some people wax their thread in different ways. What I do is I cut threads to the length that I want to sew with, and then I run it through a piece of wax once or twice on each side, and then I put it into a pressing cloth and press it under a hot iron and I put the iron down and then I pull the thread through and then flip it around and pull it through so I get the entire thread gets under the hot iron. I know some people like to just take the thread and roll it between their fingers and kind of let the heat from their hands heat up the thread and kind of melt the wax in. Personally, this has never really worked for me. Maybe it's because I have cold hands, but I find that when I do that, the wax is still sticky and, and I can still feel it kind of gripping when I pull the thread through the fabric. So. I've always put it under a pressing cloth and pressed it under an iron which makes the wax fully kind of melt into the thread and become super smooth and slick. So now to actually start the sewing, to do the insertion lace on the sides of the drawers, I decided to cut them and actually spread the pieces apart simply because I wanted to add a little bit of extra width to the drawers. So I did that and then I laid my lace down and basted it with a running stitch. Then I took a whip stitch and whipped the edge of the lace going through the fabric. Then I took out my basting stitches and folded the fabric back, not all the way to the seam line, but I folded it to the inside of the edge of the lace, and then I did a whip stitch going through the inside of the lace border as well as the folded edge of the fabric, and then I did another row of stitching which was a running stitch going right down the middle. 
For the bodice, I did more of a traditional insertion lace technique. I took the lace and laid it on top of my pattern piece, basted it down, and then I did a whip stitch along the edge, catching the edge of the lace and the fabric. Then I flipped it over and pulled out my basting stitches. I cut down the middle, pushed the fabric open to reveal the lace, folded the fabric to the same way as before with the edge of the fabric lining up with the inside edge of the lace rather than the outside edge. And then I skipped the whip stitch, but I did a running stitch right down the middle of the edge of the lace. Then I trimmed my fabric down and that was it. I repeated the same process for the insertion lays on the back panel. Then I went back to the drawers and added the crotch seam facings. So to do that, I took my facing strips and I attached them right sides together to the drawers with a running stitch. Then I finger pressed it open, finger pressed the edge under, folded it over and finished the inside with a whip stitch. To attach the lace ruffle to the drawers, I decided to do a 2 to 1 gathering ratio, so I have twice the length of lace as I do drawer edge to attach the lace to. To attach the ruffle, I did a running stitch through the mesh of the lace, pinned it on and gathered it down to the drawer edge, and then I sewed it on with a back stitch. Then I took that seam allowance and folded it upwards and sewed all of that with a running stitch. Then I finished the inseam with a small French seam, again using a running stitch. Then I went back to the bodice and hemmed the front edges, which would later turn into a button front closure. I also closed the shoulder seams and side seams with a small French seam. Here I am whipping together two pieces of lace. I did this to create a slightly larger lace for the neckline. I wanted to have this cute edging lace, but then I also wanted to have a lace that had a place to thread a ribbon through because I knew I was gonna be using that for gathering. Then I went ahead and finished my armholes. And to do that, I took just the edging lace by itself, laid it onto my fabric and secured it down with a running stitch. Then I folded the fabric back and sewed the fabric to itself with a running stitch. Then I basted my neckline lace onto the neckline and put on this little corset cover looking thing 
to check if the neckline was at the right height. Once I had the neckline at the right height, I went ahead and did a little whip stitch through the edge of the lace to attach it to the neckline. Then I trimmed down the extra fabric, folded it under, and secured it with a running stitch. At this point, I have a pretty much finished top and two separate drawer legs and it's time to attach them to the waistband. So I did a gathering stitch along the back of the top as well as the two fronts. That sounds kind of weird to say, but yeah, it was three separate gathering threads and I pinned it on and basted it and sewed it to the waistband with a back stitch. Then I trimmed down the edge and I did a whip stitch in a thin silk thread around the edge. And this was just because I wanted a little bit of extra security there. This edge does end up fully covered in fabric, but for some reason I felt the need to give it a little bit of extra security when it comes to fraying. So this is what I did. Then I took my inner waistband piece and basted it on, folded the edges under, basted the edges down, and then sewed the edges down with a whip stitch. The only thing left to do was to sew on my buttons, create buttonholes, and thread a piece of silk ribbon through the neckline. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and here is the final product. Let me know what your favorite historical undergarment is in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye!